What's going down, YouTube? It's your boy Switcher coming back at you again. You know what I'm saying? With my <clears throat> overall thoughts as to, you know, recent events that have taken place. Now, I'm going to keep this video real short. A few things I do want to talk about, though. Three things in particular. And you got to stick through the whole video to find out what they are because I'm not about to tell you what they are. Now, first things first. The Dwayne Brown trade. For all you guys that are satisfied with that move, we got robbed again. Once by number 17, and now we just got robbed by Seattle. That's what I feel about that. As far as, you know, the overall value of the trade, like I said, we didn't get a player in return. <coughs> How can you, like, everyone, I, I, I get where you guys are coming from. Well, he may flip those picks for, you know, to trade up or some shit. You could, you still could have gotten those picks and gotten a quality corner in Shaq Griffin, you know what I'm saying? In my personal opinion. Second thing I want to address. And... It, it'll come as, it, it, it won't be a shocker to most, but, you know, I, my boy Ray Ray, he, he did a, a live, live stream last night, and he mentioned how, you know, that I overdo it with mentioning, you know, Bucky Hodges and Mortavis. You know, it's not my fault that you know, those guys are over athletic. It's not my fault that, you know, if Rick was to pull the trigger, you know, those guys could help this football team. Now, <clears throat> they they weathered the storm, you know, when Fuller was hurt. But you saw the dip in production when you don't have that that threat and that was just with Fuller. You know, does Houston have a backup plan or any plan at all? You know, if Hop gets hurt, you know, knock on wood, you know, he's had an injury free career so far, you know, but you know, do they have a plan after that? I mean, have, are you really ready to invest that much into Bruce Ellington? You know, as far as Bucky Hodges, I mean, you guys can say what you want, but I go by what I see with my eyes, not by, anal you know, certain analytics or, you know, ESPN, you know, pro football focus. I don't go by those. I go by what I can see with my own two eyes, you know. And it's, again, everything that I, that I, Everything that I speak on is factual, very factual. It's it's very off. It's very it's, it's it's not often that you know I'm sitting here talking to y'all about something that isn't factual or something that wouldn't produce a positive result. That's that's what I have on the Martavis deal now. Bucky Hodges, you don't have to trade. You wouldn't have had to trade shit for him. All you had to do was put him on a simple little rookie contract. Six seven, athletic freak. Dude is, is a beast. Like those kind of guys, especially the rookies that I, I mentioned. I do a little. I've done a lot of homework on. Trust me. I've done a lot of homework. I'm not a family man. I have 
a ton of more time on my hands. I, with this system, given the fact that it's a outside in read type of team, if you got a six seven target that's just running away from guys, you could you now have an opportunity to create in the NFL what they call X plays or to the common person chunk plays. But last time I checked, those those things help you win football games, you know, and. Another thing, and I'm 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 not trying to personally dig into my boy Ray Ray on this one, but the Seattle game is clear proof of what I'm talking about. Look at that game. The defense didn't win that game for them. Their offense did. That was a high scoring game. Now, true, I get it. What he did say does make sense, you know. If a defense can't stop anybody, you know, the other team is just going to go down and score points, which inevitable, you know, which was inevitable and it did happen. But again, I'm not banking on that to happen every week. I'm positive Bill O'Brien got a ton of earful from multiple sources, you know, and I'm pretty sure he's going to fourth and two. He's going to go back to doing how it was when he first got here, which was started going for it, you know. I don't know. It's like when he got Watson, it's like all that aggressive shit that he he used to do kind of went out went out the window. I don't know what the fuck is up with that, but yeah, I know what I'm saying. Just having specific tools on offense can yield you a positive result. Maybe not every play, but at certain parts of the game. And situational football is when you need those things to happen. And if you execute right, odds are it will happen. <clears throat> you know, I said, you know, that's just me though. You know, I look at the game of football from a totally different set of eyes. You know, in my eyes, a six, seven target that's running one on one with it. Regardless of whether it's a safety or a linebacker, I'm gonna take. I'm, I'm as a as a coach. If I was a coach, I'm telling my quarterback, make that your immediate, you know, your first read. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's right there in your line of sight. It doesn't get any easier than that. You know. You know, instead of making the game harder for the quarterback. These type of athletes would make the game easier for the quarterback. Why do you think Russell Wilson was making the you know shit look so easy? Now, granted, he had a, a powerful running game, you know, with beast mode. But I mean, at that time, he was underrated. He was making throws that were were pretty good. But like I said. He was getting a lot of them. He was seeing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage with eight men being in the boxes trying to stop beast mode. But you know, back to the you know the Seattle game and whatnot. You know, like I said, shit. Those type of games prove that, yeah. Ultimately, sometimes it will come down to who has the ball last and who can make that stop on defense. Now. You guys can say what you want, but I'm not going to sit there and blame that one game and base that off of, you know, my boy Ray Ray's theory that, you know, if you go down and score a defense, you know, if a defense can't stop them, you know, you're screwed. I, I, I agree with it, but I disagree with it, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I'm not – I'm not banking on you. You you you're not gonna. I'm not expecting you know coaching errors to have, you know to. I'm not expecting those kind of coaching errors to happen. You know week in and week out, like it or not, that was a coach loss, not a team loss. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference, a big difference. You know what I'm saying? But as far as Martavis and Bucky goes. 
better athletes produce better results. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you can create those, when you can design plays that put those guys like Bucky Hodges and Martavis Bryant in favorable one-on-one situations. You know what I'm saying? Now, to my boy Ray Ray's point, you know, he did say that, you know, the Texans don't really do off the field guys, you know, that have, you know, guys that have off the field issues. And that's true. But then again, it's not because, again, and like it or not, you know, it may be the only asterisk that, you know, the Texans have on their record as far as it goes, but it's there. It's, again, something factual, something that I can speak on that I know has happened. Brian Cushing, like it or not, you can say it's a minor off the field issue. You can, some may agree with me and say it's a it's a huge off the field issue, but the dude has this is his what second or third PED violation. You know, within the past four or five years, you know it's like every other year he's getting busted for for you know for trying to cheat. You know. That's an off the field issue, you know what I'm saying? And yet, he's still on the team, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to pause it real quick, I had to change location, change scenery, but, you know, like I said, those, those things, you know, it's. Like it or not, they factual, you know what I'm saying? If Bill O'B was to get his hands on those type of players, you think Watson putting up 38, like I said, the numbers would increase dramatically, you know what I'm saying? It, it would jump, the numbers would jump so high to where it really wouldn't matter, you know what I'm saying? What happened? Yeah, sorry about that again, but no, um, I'm good. But no, and the last, let's see, I covered the Wayne Brown issue. I covered the Martavis name issue. Oh yeah, last thing but not least, you know what I'm saying? And again, not to dig into my boy Ray Ray, but I was meaning to do this, you know, once I was when I was in front of a computer, you know, to where I could pull up, you know, the teams that have tanked, you know, to not only get the player that they need to, you know, succeed further in the future, but you know what I'm saying? It, some like I, I understand like where he's his argument is you know where it's a collective bargain you know and players they receive money to you know perform better but again you know look at teams that's been consistently bad you know like the Jacksonville Jaguars the Cleveland Browns you know the Jets the the Lions a few years ago um, Arizona you know even though that's just happening this year, you know, they're they're in that mix. Um, shit, Tennessee when they had when they wanted to when they had to go get Mariota, you know what I'm saying? Like, but each one of those teams, like okay, with Tennessee, they they realized that Jake Locker wasn't the wasn't the answer. They went and got Zach Mittenberger. He wasn't the answer. So those guys sucked at quarterback. So. Therefore, just like, and if you're a Houston fan, you should know this. If but you get back quarterback play, then it can drastically hurt how your team plays. You know what I'm saying? And that isn't called tanking. That's just a bad product on the field. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, after so many weeks, you know what I'm saying? Like, after probably about the fourth, I ain't going to say fourth, because the teams don't really try to give up at that point. But, you know, after about week six or seven, you know, if teams are like one and six, 
you know, they, they count that as a loss, a lost season, you know, and they, 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 they plan for the next year. You know what I'm saying? That's not called tanking. That's, that's thinking ahead of the curve, so to say, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going on 15. I'm going to, I'm going to finish this topic because I'm not done on it, you know, but as per usual, like some peace and sorry for the interruptions, y'all.